Hello everyone and welcome to another one story. We will be following her. Please go ahead and do so and so you can continue following her journey. It is surviving breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think she joined. Let's just give her a moment. Mm -hmm. So I was learning how to use my camera. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, well, great morning. I was just introducing you, Miss Farah. Um, uh -huh. So I've been following you for some time now. And what your story amazes me is that you've been fighting breast cancer three different times. You're still yeah. currently fighting it. But yeah. your journey started since 2011, so that's a lot of years. Can you please walk us through a little bit of your journey and where you currently stand today as well? Well, in 2011, I was diagnosed with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer that metastasized to my lymph nodes. Um, I was young, married, newly married with two children, and I found the lump on my own when I was taking a shower. And when I did, when I felt the lump, I automatically knew it was breast cancer because it was very foreign. It was hard. It felt like a marble. It was something I never felt before. So I automatically told myself, you have breast cancer. And honestly, I was like, you're going to die. That was my thought because at such a young age, I wasn't educated about breast cancer. You know, you see it on TV, you donate, but I didn't know anyone who had breast cancer. and I wasn't aware of anything but death. Breast cancer, any type of cancer, it, it, it unfortunately leads to the death of someone. So it was fearful the first time when I, was, when I felt the lump. You know, everybody rallied around me, my family. Yeah. I went to a doctor and had an emergency biopsy, which was very painful. And that afternoon, she called me and told me, you have breast cancer. Um, the hardest part was not hearing those words. It was coming downstairs and telling my family who were devastated. Because, again, we all felt breast cancer would lead to me passing away. So after that, of course, as a lot of you all know, there's a lot of tests that goes through that. You go, you meet the surgeon, you get a PET scan. I had a full body scan. So it just traveled to my lymph nodes. And everything just moved pretty fast. It was in the month of February. So things moved pretty fast. Me having to tell my, my job going on disability, I had a double mastectomy, I had extenders, I had to get implants, I did chemotherapy, I think it was about six months. Yeah. And again, I got over the chemo chemotherapy, eventually stopped. You know, there was a lot of side effects while I was on chemotherapy, as far as, you know, losing my hair, physically changing, being tired, feeling ill. And again, at this, that time, I had two, you know, two boys, age three and one, so kind of like, navigating babies. all of that yeah babies yeah. them not fully understanding why mommy's bald and sick all the time and eventually that storm came to an end and there was light at the end of that storm there was a sunshine and a rainbow because i was no longer doing chemotherapy anymore you know you're considered cancer free and i do put the quotes and i lived my life perfectly well for about i would say about six years and then yeah. 2017 i had to get a full hysterectomy because i was taking some oxygen which is a preventative to you know with, with the breast cancer that i had and at that time i was thickening the of the lining of my uterus so i had to get a full hysterectomy and when i did that i had a lot of abdomen pain and so i decided to take percocet which was prescribed to me so i wasn't taking anything that wasn't prescribed but because of the pain, I was taking a little bit more than I guess I needed, and the pain got worse. And at that point, because of the severe pain, I went to the emergency room. And when I went to the emergency room, they did an, an X, at the time, I think it was an X ray. And the woman, the nurse, came over and she said, Oh, do you know you have cancer in your lungs? And I was, that, that time I was shocked and devastated because I had no symptoms there was nothing that could tell me that i was sick at that time yeah you know you're tired but you are mom you're working you're moving around i was been coughing i had shortness of breath i had a very active life so to hear that was devastating and because i was there for something else so i was in the hospital for about seven days 
where they had to put a tube up my nose, down my throat, all into my stomach, just to get my bowels moving again. And at the time, I couldn't focus on that because I was so concerned about the cancer. So again, it was, it was all over again. Chemotherapy, having to take time off of work. This time it wasn't as bad as the first time because it wasn't as strong as they say the chemotherapy, but I still had to go through a lot of stuff. So again, at that time, it was like, oh, you don't need treatment. You're good. You know, again, the cancer at that time, they felt wasn't there anymore in my life. So it was fine. So in 2020, during COVID, I wasn't feeling well because now I was a little bit more aware of my body. And I told my doctor, something's off. It's a different type of fatigue. And they decided to do a PET scan and cancer. Not only did that time it was there, it weakened my heart. So now, not only was I dealing with having cancer, I was dealing with a uh, uh, weakening of the heart. So now I had to add a single cardi cardiologist to my list of doctors. So then I was on HER2 and HER7 um, for a while about three about three years and that was working very well for me and then come 2023 last year this progression to the lungs in the, the, the cancer activity increased the uh, progression increased so in january of this year i had to start chemotherapy which is called in her two and that is long term meaning and then when i tell people long term like oh how long are you going to take it Long term, meaning there's no end to the chemotherapy. So I am now, honestly, in a fight for my life. That's what I call it. A fight to continue surviving this terrible disease. And I have to now face the reality that this is not going to end. Meaning I will be on some type of chemotherapy drug for the rest of my life. So that's where I am now. I'm on her two positive, or I mean, I'm on in in her two, and I did the uh, fifth infusion two weeks ago. Yeah, I when we spoke, it was very shocking because you know you do hear of people uh, having reoccurrences and things like that, but you usually get it like within the year or a few months, like, you know, you go for your checkup. But when you told me that you were in remission for six, seven years almost, and then again, you felt normal. And one day they just told you, oh, you know, you have it again. So it, anytime somebody gets a diagnosis, yeah. it's very emotional, it's very overwhelming, but there's something inside of you that you just have to pull it together, right? Tell me a little bit about like your mental health because it really is there's you have to mentally you know pull yourself together tell me how do you do it how do you stay strong and throughout this whole journey how yeah like your best practices what do you tell somebody how to pull it together <laughs> pretty much well because this is my third time on chemotherapy i, I realized that each time there were different i'll call them coping mechanisms yeah. You know, that's what I call them. I, I cope. So the first time was kind of like, oh, I'm not going to let this cancer kill me. I'm a warrior. I'm going to do it. And I remember I had a pair of shoes that were very expensive. I had them near my nightstand. And I brought a pair of shoes and the outfit. And I said, one day I'm going to wear this. So that was my way of telling myself, I'm going to get to that point where I'm going to feel great and wear that outfit with those shoes. That was how I dealt with it then. Because again, my kids were young yeah i it was very, very hard to hide yeah. they quite they didn't understand as much so i didn't have to be as transparent and tell them what's going on but visually they saw the change and they couldn't really understand so that was the first, first time the second time was a shocker and it wasn't fear i wasn't i said the time I and mean, i kind of think that time was more of a blurb i kind of blocked it out because now mm -hmm. I'm talking about i don't remember how I coped, I think it was more so prayer and faith that time. All, throughout all three journeys, I had prayer and faith. But I think the second time around, I had more of a support team. So I, I was able to lean on them more than the first time. The first time I didn't have much support. So I think my faith and support. 
And my faith has been there throughout this journey. This time around, there's more faith. Yeah. Because the other two times there was, a, in my head, an uh, uh, end to it. So it's kind of like I had everything mapped out on a calendar. Like, oh, you have... 207 days left. You had this amount of days left as far as when that chemotherapy was going to come to an end. Right. This time around, unfortunately, no end. the end of the treatment will be the end of my life. So there's no end. I, 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 I don't have a schedule for that. Only God has a schedule for that. So with this time, it's a lot of, I started meditating, which is something I always felt was probably difficult for me to do. I started doing that a couple of weeks ago. I pray a lot. I listen to gospel music. I've joined several support groups. You know, I, I met you, which is great. This is another form of I consider a support group. I'm able to openly speak about this without getting emotional. I've gotten to that point where I could candidly speak about my journey without emotionally breaking down. I'm able to do that now. Um, my support this time is my children because they're older. And my, my son now is 18 and my youngest is 14. So I'm able to talk to them a little bit more. I'm able to be open, share videos with them. They follow my Instagram page. They follow my YouTube page. So the transparency has made it a little bit more comfortable for me now than before trying to hide certain things from them. Um, I have friends that I didn't have before that are supportive. So with me is definitely prayer has gotten me through this my faith in believing in God and there's a reason why I'm going through this and what I do tell myself every day when I'm feeling down, it could be worse. You're up, you're able to speak, you're able to walk, you're able to see. So I'm always saying, Fred, you could have been better and you could have not be here to see a lot of the things that your kids are going through now. So with me, I, anytime I think of a negative, I think of maybe five positives. Yeah, definitely. I can definitely agree with all of that. I think me and you, you know, spoke a little bit earlier today and, we both kind of said it's, I mean, it's just the morning and we already are pulling so much strength from inside of us to, you know, be here today because we want to be in front of everyone. We want to share our stories. And I'm so definitely grateful for you as well, because I'm here, even if I'm not feeling that great or you might not be feeling that great, but we bring each other strength and to keep right. forward. Um, I know you're very big on prayer and faith. I think, you know, there's so much that you can put on the doctors. There's so much put things that you can put on, you know, is the medication going to work today? Sometimes they don't, you know, there's obviously your family, but at one point you're by yourself. And so prayer and faith, I know are very big on you. And I just want to know a little bit more about that. If it's okay with you, I just want to know, how do you incorporate a prayer into your daily life? What does that look like for you? Okay. So one thing I want to touch on that you said is that when you're by yourself, yeah. you may have all the support in the world, support Lucy fan, but when you're in that bed or wherever, in that couch yeah. or chair and you're in pain and you have all the side effects from that treatment, you are on your own. They could be there. They're physically free, but they can't really get rid of any of that pain, but comfort you by their words or maybe by touch. So I came to that realization as much as support that I have from friends and family. When I'm after my chemotherapy and sick for days, they really can't do much for me as far as that type of pain that I'm going through. So my way of prayer, which I've noticed has helped me, there's a lot of um, videos and prayers that I watch on YouTube. That's how I start my mornings. Um, I've noticed that I started doing silent meditation when I just sit in silence for five minutes and try not to, it's hard to do, but I try not to think of anything. And I started doing that maybe a couple of weeks, like just sit in silence. I put my alarm on. I turn both of my phones on silent. And I just sit there in total silence. If you can have that, and I do because like when my kids are in school, it's pretty quiet. And whatever come, thoughts come in my head, I'm like, no thoughts. Just push it away, push it away, and try to not have any thoughts come into my head. It's not easy because early no. in the morning, that's when you think about work, kids, schedule, this. But I'm trying to do, I start with five minutes. I mean, within the five minutes, I think maybe one minute, I'm really not thinking everything, but I try to just bring in good energy. 
I listen to a lot of gospel music. I have like over a hundred something gospel music in my playlist. So that helps me uplift myself. That is also encouraging words. So I think right now my, I guess my, what I do is morning schedule is listening to a morning prayer, which is on YouTube. I do the silent meditation five minutes and I will listen to some gospel music. And throughout the day, I can have something that pisses me off or I'm not feeling my best. I'll just throw on a gospel music that kind of uplifts me, dance a little bit around the house. And until that feeling goes away, I continue to listen to that music. And once I feel, I feel a little bit better. I would then, you know, maybe not listen to it and just go about my business. But whenever I feel like I'm feeling down or something's kind of like ticking me off, I'll listen to music to kind of bring me back into peace and state. Yes, I think, and I wanted to ask you that because a lot of people, like you said, um, something might throw you off that day. And so that's why I wanted to ask what you do because even I have my routine of my prayers, like when I do it in, you know, at night or in the morning or gospel on my drives or things like that. But sometimes, no matter if you do the same thing every day, sometimes you're still very irritable, you're not feeling good, and maybe your faith is lacking that morning. So that's why I wanted you to share because I think it's always helpful to have other um, outlets that you haven't thought about that could also help you, you know, and I kind of like that you, no matter how much noise is around, you really are trying. And I definitely, to anybody that's listening today, please try. Because for me at the beginning, it's not easy, you know, Uh, like you said, if you've been doing this for years, and I'm sure that you've had times that it wasn't easy to sit there and like, try to talk to God, you know, you're upset, you're kind of questioning things. So um, please don't ever give up and just keep trying to spend that one on one with with God and strengthen your faith. Definitely. Um, I want to take you back a little bit to I know, um, you've been dealing with this since 2011. And you mentioned that the second time you didn't even have symptoms, right? But you did go and seek some uh, assistance because of something else. And then they caught it. Um, This is something that I want to know for myself as well. Um, Yeah. You know, this morning I said, I'm not doing too well. And I'm like always hesitant. Like, is this worth going to the hospital? Is it not worth going to the hospital? Because as a cancer patient, you know, we have, have bad days. We have good days. Sometimes we get all of our symptoms as one. How have you been able to distinguish when something's not right and it's emergency worthy, or if it's like something that could wait and, you know, maybe seek the, um, just going to the doctor, are you able to distinguish it by now? So that is a great question because with breast cancer, we, the doctor sometimes makes us become very paranoid yes. and there are times you may call like, Oh, go to urgent care. So I've, always been one of those people who's been somewhat in tune with my body as a young child i don't know it's just me i'm more into like oh if i have a pimple i'll notice if i have a extra bump on my own i'm like oh that wasn't there yesterday so with having the breast cancer again i didn't catch the lump in my breast on time you know because i wasn't doing breast exams i was young i think at the time i was like 31 so i wasn't like feeling up on myself to see if i had lungs because I just wasn't doing it. It was by accident, by the grace of God. I call myself two miracles that happened to me. So now it's kind of like, I know the side effects of the chemotherapy because I've done it for so long. I know for me, what is a scare because, and this is for me, and this is not how I would tell everybody to kind of do in their lives because everyone's different. Yeah. But because I had cancer in my lungs, I had cancer in my breast, and I didn't have any signs. I don't think all of a sudden, if I have pain here, oh my God, it's cancer. Like the other two times, I didn't even know it was cancer. Yeah. And I'm regularly getting PET scans. So when something is wrong with me, I don't automatically think, oh, it's cancer. So that's one thing. I don't think that because I'm regularly getting PET scans. So that's one. The second thing is the Things that now are happening to me are from the chemotherapy. Like I have stomach ache a lot of times. I had shortness of breath the first time I did the um, treatment, which resulted in me going to the hospital twice to the emergency room. So with this new doctor, what I'm finding out is he's, when I do call and say I'm feeling this way, they take 
what I'm telling them more serious than I am. So you have some doctors that don't take patients serious when they call and think, oh, this person's being overly dramatic or paranoid. And you have doctors who take it a little bit too serious. So like my doctor, when I'm like, oh my God, I have, I've been having stomach aches and stuff. Oh, we need to get testing done. And I'm like, no, no, we do not. Oh, you need to go to urgent care. No, I do not. I'm getting stomach aches because of the chemotherapy. And they tend to not believe that. But because I know my body and I know how my stomach is hurting, I know this is not something for urgent, for urgent care because they're not going to be able to do anything. I need tongues. I need something because it's gassy. And I think is as patients, we need to be able to vividly describe what we're feeling because a lot of times the doctor will give us textbook answer or oh, you have a stomach ache they don't have the time go to urgent care mind you my insurance is going to go up it's going to cost me 100 100 something dollars because i live in brooklyn the hospital's all the way in new um new, in manhattan all this stuff is happening i'm like no so what i do sometimes and i i suggest to everyone sometimes it's not always calling your oncologist depending what you have i ended up calling my gastro doctor and what he told He's like, drink more fiber. He gave me a regimen. And I haven't had my stomach ache in a couple of days. So things like that. But to go back to answering your question, paying attention and not letting things prolong for too long. If you wake up, you have a a headache today. You wake up, you have the headache tomorrow. By third day, you need to call your doctor, maybe go to urgent care. If it's prolonged pain or discomfort, do not wait. That's what I will say to everyone. I what may wait because i know my body and knowing your body is going through this journey and paying attention to everything that's why you have to just pay attention to what you're feeling and i think not panicking when you feel something because a lot of times when you panic your heart is beating fast you're short and spread now other symptoms are coming up oh my god i feel like i'm gonna faint so i think it's calm down yeah. sit still and be like okay i feel the pain here what type of pain is it and stay off of google sometimes because when you feel something, oh, I'm going to Google breast cancer and abdomen pain. What does that mean? And there's a whole list of stuff and you go crazy. So I think with me is not so much. And I do Google certain things, but not so much thinking that's me. And just saying, Farah, everyone is different. You can't jump to conclusions. But whatever I'm feeling now, I know it's from the chemotherapy. And I advocate for myself when my doctor is trying to make me think I'm delusional or it's not chemotherapy, something else. I'm like, no, it's the chemo, it's the chemo. So with this new doctor, I'm constantly saying, I'm not going to urgent care. It's the chemotherapy. You guys have to give me something else. I'm not going to urgent care. So yeah, that's I, what's I, been happening. I definitely like how you put it. Like you have to calm down first, mm-hmm. right? And assess the situation. And you know, one thing that I've noticed, so definitely the people like it's nice that you're in tune right and i think when it comes to yourself like if you've had a stomach in the past then now you know right okay it's not as bad as that time it maybe it is worse you know you have something to compare it but as a cancer patient sometimes you're new in this journey right like you actually gone through it a few times but to the people that are barely starting you really don't know if it's normal or not so definitely like you mentioned talk to your doctor, make that phone call, yes. right? But yes. I think it's what's important as well that I've learned is that also know your doctor. Because you mentioned some doctors are like, go to the urgent care, go to emergency yeah. room. I've gotten that so many times yep. from specific doctors. And then I have other ones that they're like, I'm going to send a prescription to your pharmacy, <laughs> right? And and sometimes I learned the hard way. I'm like, okay, I trusted them. And it turned out it was actually something more serious. And mm. I was just taking medication. So I think not just, you know, knowing your body is important, but I think once you've been with your doctor, maybe take notes and pay attention to how your doctors react to, yeah. right? Because um, I think a lot of times we're like, okay, I is I know my body, I made the phone calls, but maybe knowing if that doctor is the one that overreacts a lot or that just is very, not overreacts, but um, is extra cautious, right? I mean, some of them are very extra cautious because you are a cancer patient. They want you to go to the emergency room, but also know that, well, you know, they kind of dismiss me a lot. And if you're talking, to you know that specific doctor you know maybe if you still don't feel good like you said now it's the third day then make something about it like at the end of the day don't just go by what your doctor tells you if your body's telling you three days in a row and it's progressing and it's getting worse you know definitely you know take it upon yourself to go to the urgent care so 
Um, mm. One of the things and that to add on, sorry, to yeah, add on to that, when you're doing chemotherapy, it's always good to notify your doctor when something's yeah. wrong because some people don't do well to the chemotherapy. Like me with my stomach hurting, I'm paying attention to that next treatment because I know one of the side effects of that, it does thin the lining of your stomach. So these are things you have to pay attention to. What I would tell everyone to do when you start a treatment, read and find out what the side effects are. So when you do have them, you know, oh, this is a side effect of the chemo and pay close attention how often you're getting those side effects. But like you said, anyone who's new to this journey, whatever you have, call your doctor because sometimes it could go totally left where the chemo is really doing something that damaging to your body. But again, I've been in this journey for so long that I know now how to differentiate emergency yeah. or if I would tough it out and just wait the three days and see what happens. Exactly. Yeah, so just know where you're at, like you said, know where yes. you're at, and then make that decision. But first, again, we can't, I think you and I both agree, you have to calm down yes. before making any decision. Yes. Whether it's a phone call, the hospital, you know, just calm down because chemo does mess with your heartbeat. Um, mm -hmm. or, you know, can cause anxiety or can, you know, it's overwhelming mentally, you know, you can also overwhelm yourself. So calm down. Definitely. That's the first step, right? We yes. that. Um, yeah. so one thing that I, um, you and I had talked about was in January mm -hmm. and you mentioned it as well. In January, you were told you are going to be in this medication yeah. and definitely, yes. right? I don't know a lot. A lot of people that have been told that um, mm -hmm. I've been told, you know, I'm going to be in high blood pressure for life. Right. And that was like, I told him, no, <laughs> that was my answer right away. Um, so I can't even imagine being told you're going to be long term on this cancer medication. Tell me a little bit more, because I'm sure even though I don't know that many people, somebody watching today might have been just given that news of, hey, you got to be on this long term if you don't want it to progress how have you been coping with this because again you've been going through this quite a few years but this is the first time that they're telling you like like you said there's no end date to this how are you coping with this so first i too never heard of someone doing chemotherapy from for, for you know indefinite so i always thought chemotherapy kills the cancer you may go into some what treatment or you don't do anything Cause I've been, I took treat a different type of treatment, which is non chemotherapy for about three years prior to this. Um, so it was like, well, if this treatment doesn't work, you're going to have to take chemotherapy. How I'm coping initially when I found out now, well, I'm not going to, that's the thing. I'm not coming here to be like, oh yeah, life is all great and flowers and perfect. No, 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 no. It, it's, not. it's not easy. So my coping skills is day by day. Because if I think far into the future, I get anxiety, I panic attack, I get depressed, I start crying, I get emotional. So yeah. I just take it day by day or maybe, what am I doing this weekend? Maybe right now my, my thinking process is up to Monday. I'm not thinking about anything else past that. So like the next week, like tomorrow, I'm going to hang out my friends, Sunday, I'm going to do this, Monday, I have a doctor's appointment, that's it. I don't think past that because then I'm not going to lie, I get depressed. Uh, right now, I have good days and bad days because of the side effects of the chemotherapy. And I felt I was not told. To me, I felt the communication or the information that my doctor gave me was inaccurate and to me. Because, and it was, the, it was a doctor and an NP. Oh, this is chemotherapy, but it's not that bad. Oh, this is chemotherapy. A lot of people could tolerate it. Oh, this is chemotherapy. You'll have a, you'll have quality of life. Yeah. Oh, this is chemotherapy. You're not gonna lose your hair. Oh, this is chemotherapy, but you're not. You know. So I went into this like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do chemotherapy and I'm gonna be okay. And it was lies because once I started chemotherapy, everything that I experienced in the, the first time I'm going through now. So how I deal with it on a daily basis, and this is where the full transparency is there. Yeah, please. I'm no longer thinking about myself. You get at a point in your life where you think of yourself when you're going through chemotherapy. 
oh, I have to survive to be here, whatever. And at this point where I am, it's others. Like, I can't, I can't quit. What about my kids? I can't quit. What about my mom? I can't quit. What about my boyfriend? I can't quit. I got a puppy. Who's going to take care of my, my puppy? So it's no longer about self. Because to right. be honest, with all this suffering we're go- I'm going through, I could be like, God, take me now. I'll be happy up in heaven. But now, because I have so many people that I know will be devastated, and I don't want my legacy, because I think with what I'm having, there is a legacy in my like, with what I'm going through, that, oh, oh she quit. Because that, the only one I quit, because I would have to stop taking the chemotherapy. So I don't want the people that, that love me to know I tapped out, where I was like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Because the love I have for them is why I'm fighting everything. Yeah. So for me to quit, I think that would affect them. Like, oh, she didn't think she should fight for us. I don't know. I think mentally right now, it's all about everybody else that I love. Like, I got to keep going for them. And the other times I had, I was more, I had to keep fighting for myself. But this time, at this age, it's like, I got to fight for them. I'm glad you said that. Um, yeah. Um, I, I have a little little one, and I also have a yeah. teenager, and so it's two different lifestyles. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think that's how I kind of get through my day. It's like um, there's times that I'm really sick and really tired. And yeah. um, I always remember moms don't get sick days, you know, moms don't get time off. And even mm-hmm. my, if my husband's home and he's there, I still always feel the need, like, God bless me with a child. God bless me yeah. to be this mother. I still got to be that mother. Correct. And so that's what gets me definitely through the days as well. That's that's what I focus on, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm mm-hmm. so glad that um, you came on here today. And I'm so glad that you were very transparent because, yes, we share what helps us and how to get through the days. But behind it, it's nice to know that we're, ha- we're, we're having to deal with these coping mechanisms. We're having to focus on like tunnel vision. We're having to focus on our family because we need something, because we're having yes. a hard time, because we are sick, because it's such a big fight. Even on the best of days, less symptoms, less everything, we're still fighting. Um, so thank you so much for being on here. But before I let you go, to anybody that's listening today, is there anything else that you want to share? Well, one thing I would definitely want to tell everyone is don't give up. Because giving up, I think at this point, I always feel like I've been going through this. There's a reason. There's a purpose. Yeah. I'm still sometimes trying to figure out maybe my purpose is to help others. But I always say don't give up. Like fight. You're worth fighting for. Like your life is worth you continuing to fight. Don't give up and whenever you think of one negative try to think of five things that you're positive about or that you can look in your life whatever it is it could be oh i woke up today i i'm able to see the sun the sun is out i'm able to eat maybe one of my favorites whatever it could be the tedious little thing just say three positive things in your head think one negative think five positive if a negative come and just keep doing that to other that has helped it was some advice i received from a cousin and i've been doing it it has worked i mean sometimes you know you got to still push yourself but i think what i would definitely tell to anyone keep fighting do not give up the days you feel like giving up reach out to anyone possibly if you're pray pray think of things of think of things that make you happy think of happy memories think of moments that you future moments that's gonna make you happy but don't give up Yes, please don't. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. There's something that um, I take with me from what you said today, and I appreciate you so much. And I appreciate everybody that's watching today. I love you guys. Have a blessed day, and we'll talk to you very, very soon, hopefully. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Mm-hmm.